am lying in bed, the sick bed. I have been lying in it for well over six months now. I have been to the best local and foreign hospitals money can pay for and drank all kinds of concoctions in the name of herbal medicine. Finally, I have been sent home after wandering to the end of the earth for healing without success. My children, brothers and sisters are sitting at my bedside today. They must have sensed it. Some close friends are also standing and overlooking my face. Sadly, I start to breathe heavily. Someone among the people sitting in the room is praying seriously, and everyone is miming the prayer, trying to mimic what this fellow is doing. I could hear him saying in a prayer for my life to be spared and for me to be healed, but it isn't to be. My breath begins to decrease. I open my eyes and behold, the angel of death has arrived. I am preparing for the eternal journey. My mouth opened and my brother dropped some water into it. Maybe it is a zamzam water that I had kept for the moment. Then everyone intensifies their prayer. I lost my vision. I lost my thank. I even lost my feeling, but I can still hear. I can only hear loved ones crying and wailing in pain. I am not yet dead, but I am lifeless. The angel of death does the final act and takes my soul with outermost briskness and alacrity. I have now left this world. All my wealth, cars, properties, bank balances, connections, contacts and contracts are no longer useful to me. My identity is my grave. Even my name is no longer mentioned. I am called a corpse. My relatives begin preparation to put the corpse into the earth for two reasons, depending on where anyone sits in this whole episode unfolding. One, because I have been sick for many months and had subsequently died, I had to be buried right away because I had suffered enough. And two, someone amongst my people is in a hurry to control the wealth I left behind, forgetting that the same fate will befall him in the not too distant future. Some of my relatives even think it is not appropriate to keep me in the house for long. Ow. The very house I had sweat on my brow before building, I am not fit to stay in it now. My bath is being prepared. I have been brought out of the enclosure for my last bath. My bathroom with expensive bath fittings is not for me now. I am wrapped in a white cotton shroud. Ah, but what happened to all my expensive suit, shirts and authentic perfumes? I am locked in a wooden box to travel to my grave in a rented car. Ambulance. What? So even my cars are not for me again. What then have I amassed so many worthless things for? Why did I lie and step on the necks of others to gain all this wealth, if I will have no use of them in the life hereafter? I forgot that my last trip is near and setting. I forgot that the hammer of death cannot miss its target when it is due. Hmm. I lost. I lost my game. Remember good deeds will make our journey in the life hereafter enjoyable. Remember death is certain and assured. Now stop imagining. Put yourselves in the shoe of the person in the best scenario and kindly follow me along. The religion you belong to shouldn't be a problem here. This is a sound that cuts across all belief systems. Even if you're a free thinker, this discussion affects you. I have entitled this audio, Shadow of the Future. I am not trying in any way to say that riches are not good with the best scenario. I am not downplaying the importance of money and wealth. Money does all things, or better still, does almost everything. My only concern is why only few people have amassed so much wealth to the detriment of many. My concern lies in the fact that you are not spreading love and touching lives where you ought to. The illustration above gives us a vivid insight into how useless money can be when your days on earth are numbered. Instead of keeping huge sums of money in the bank accounts and having no use for them, I implore you to touch lives with it. I can tell you for a fact that someone needs a dime to survive just across your neighborhood. People who have not eaten just across the street Someone is on a sick bed and at the brink of death because he cannot afford a simple aspirin. You cannot solve all the humanitarian needs of the world. But you can contribute to it significantly. So I need you to stretch your hands a bit more and open your arms. For in it lies the gratification that will grope you on your day of departure of the earth. Just because you have money does not mean hardship will not befall you. Spare a thought for those with family, health and job struggles. Stop impoverishing people. Stop being the cause of people's hardship and difficulties. Some people are directly responsible for all the challenges of others. Imagine that employers fail to contribute monthly to the retirement benefit of their employees and they pay them peanuts which is way below the minimum wage. What do you think they are doing to these poor workers? Are they not making them poorer? Some people who claim to be men of God charge huge sums of money in the name of consultation fee and selling of oil with different colors, pigments and different aroma to the poor congregants. Are they not impoverishing the congregation? Some people who have come together to form a government, instead of practicing democracy, they are now practicing kleptocracy, a system of government in which only few people have conspired to milk their countries dry. 
No country can progress if its politics is more profitable than its industry. Imagine a country where you have all the skills and certificate, but can only get a job if you know someone at a place of influence. What becomes of those of us who do not know Kwekwa Nancy? You must pay money before you are employed these days if you are male, or give in to your boss's sexual gratification if you are female. A young man wants to marry the love of his life, and his in-laws-to-be have given him a tall marriage list that contains cows, zebras, lions, and every expensive item you can imagine on earth. How does he buy all these expensive items? Everything has been monetized to the advantage of the very few and to the detriment of the larger population. Where will you go with all the money you are graciously stealing? If money and material things make you believe you are better than others, you are the poorest person on earth. What will you do with all the properties you are amassing without doing due diligence to humanity? As a chief, your only interest lies in the fact that you sell plots of lands to people, take royalties and marry additional wives yearly without contributing to the development of your area. What kind of a leader are you? Most young women, pretty themselves, only go into relationship with married men, making these men neglect their families and causing deep sorrow to their wives and children. Sister, what exactly is your problem? Can't you see you are breaking somebody's home? You can make money, but not to the detriment of others. And if you do make money, help others when they need be, because not everyone can make it. This journey is a survival of the fifties, so we help those who cannot make it to continue to live with the hope of surviving this marathon of success someday. What is wealth if it does not benefit others? What is wealth if people are dying before your very eyes? You might probably be saying that you are not James Bond to save the world. I agree, but you wouldn't lose anything if you invest in humanity. A candle does not lose anything by lighting another candle. If you do not believe in doing good to receive blessings from above, you surely must believe in doing good to feel good. Do not wait to gather all the resources on earth before touching lives. At least have a fond memory of something to hold on to before your last breath. When I was a kid, I thought only rich people give. I grew up to realize that only kind-hearted people give. Have a shadow of your future at hand now. To those who are helping others, may your cups be always be full to help. At the time when Bill Gates was the richest man on earth, someone asked him this question. Is there anyone richer than you? He said yes, only one. Many years ago, I had been dismissed and had gone to New York airport. I read articles of newspapers there. I liked one of the newspapers and wanted to buy it, but I didn't have change, so I abandoned the idea. Suddenly, a black boy called me and told me, this newspaper is for you. I said, but I don't have change. He said, no problem, I give you for free. After three months, I went to the New York airport again and coincidentally, that story happened again and that same boy gave me another free newspaper. I said, I can't accept it, but he said, I give you from my profit. After nine, ten years, I had been rich and I decided to find that boy. I found him after a one and a half month search. I asked him, do you know me? He said, yes, you are the famous Bill Gates. I said, you gave me two free newspapers many years ago. Now I want to compensate it. I am going to give you everything you want. The black boy replied, you can't compensate it. I asked him why. He said, because I gave you when I was poor. You want to give me when you are rich. So how do you compensate it? Bill Gates said, I think that boy is richer than me. You don't have to be rich or wait to be rich to give. Touch lives in all places and prepare adequately for the inevitable. Alexander the Great was an ancient Macedonian ruler and one of history's greatest military minds who ruled as king of Macedonia and Persia and established the largest empire the ancient world had ever seen. As a military commander, he was undefeated and most successful throughout history. On his way from conquering many countries, he came down with an illness. At that moment, his captured territories, powerful army, sharp swords and wealth all had no meaning to him. He realized that death will soon arrive and he will be unable to return to his homeland. He told his officers, I will soon leave this world. I have three final wishes. You need to carry out what I tell you. His generals and tears agreed. My first wish is to have my physician bring my coffin home alone. After gasping for air, Alexander continued, My second wish is to scatter the gold, silver and gems from my treasury house along the path to the tomb where you ship my coffin to the grave. After wrapping in a woolen blanket and resting for a while, he said, My final wish is to put my hands outside the coffin. 
People around him were all curious, but no one dared to ask him the reason. Alexander's most favored general kissed his hand and asked, My Majesty, we will follow your instructions, but can you tell us why you want us to do it this way? After taking a deep breath, Alexander said, I want everyone to understand the three lessons I have learned. To let my physician carry my coffin alone is to let people realize that a physician cannot really cure people's illness, especially when they face death. The physicians are powerless. I hope people will learn to treasure their lives and that of others. My second wish is to tell people not to be like me in pursuing wealth. I spent my whole life pursuing wealth, but I was wasting my time. The third wish is to let people know that I came to this world empty-handed, and I will leave this world empty-handed. He closed his eyes, and after he finished talking, he stopped breathing. What becomes of you when you depart the earth should be your primary concern. Touch lives now by sharing what you have. Put smiles on the faces of people. Make their hearts swell with joy. Don't be a nightmare for people. Be their light. Be their hope. Be their joy. Be a pack of encouragement to them. Think of yourself as the man in the narration from the beginning of this audio. You won't have another chance when the time is due. Think of yourself as Alexander the Great. I have just brought you the shadow of your future. Start working to tilt the pendulum toward the right side. Time is already fast spent. Spread the tentacles of love to reach as many as you can. Let us end here with this last narrative. When the billionaire Femi Otadola, the Nigerian, was asked what made him happy in life, the billionaire said, I have gone through four stages of happiness in life and finally understood the true meaning of true happiness. The first stage was to accumulate wealth and means, but at this stage, I did not get the happiness I wanted. Then came the second stage of collecting valuables and items, but I realized that the effect of these things were temporary and the luxury of valuable things did not last long. Then came the third stage of getting these projects, this very, very big project. That was when I was holding 95% of diesel supply in Nigeria and Africa. I was also the largest vessel owner in Africa and Asia, but even here, I did not get the happiness I had imagined. The fourth stage was when a friend of mine asked me to buy wheelchairs for some disabled children, about 200 kids. At the first request, I immediately bought the wheelchairs, but a friend insisted that I go with him to hand over the chairs. I saw the glow of happiness on the faces of these children. I saw them all sitting in the wheelchairs, moving around and having fun. It was as if they had arrived at a picnic spot and were sharing a jackpot winning. I felt real joy inside me. When I decided to leave, one of the kids grabbed my leg. I tried to free my leg gently, but a child stared at my face and held my leg tightly. I bent down and asked the child, do you need anything else? The answer the child gave me did not only make me happy, but also changed my attitude to life completely. This child said, I want to remember your face so that when I meet you in heaven, I'll be able to recognize you and thank you once again. What would you be remembered for after you have left that office or place? Will anyone desire to see your face again when it all matters? Ponder over these questions. What is relevant to you today may not be relevant to you tomorrow. Just be kind to those around you. A big acknowledgement to all the sources of information for this audio. To Dynamic Studios for recording this sound. Because of time, we cannot mention all the names of our supporters. My name is Aspect Obimpe Frimpong. You can call me the narrator. I'm from the Aspect Motivational Audios in Ghana. You can reach me on all my social media handles. For more audios, assistance and sponsorship for the audios, please WhatsApp or call me on plus 233-2488-11138. I was on this one with Miss Elizabeth S. E. Ado. Always remember that, in the end, when you leave this world, the only things you can take with you are the things you have packed inside of your heart. Mm -hmm.